Vacuum is space void of matter. The word stems from the Latin adjective vacuus for vacant or void. An approximation to such vacuum is a region with a gaseous pressure much less than atmospheric pressure. Physicists often discuss ideal test results that would occur in a perfect vacuum, which they sometimes simply call vacuum or free space and use the term partial vacuum to refer to an actual imperfect vacuum as one might have in a laboratory or in space. In engineering and applied physics on the other hand, vacuum refers to any space in which the pressure is lower than atmospheric pressure. The Latin term in vacuo is used to describe an object as being in what would otherwise be a vacuum. The quality of a partial vacuum refers to how closely it approaches a perfect vacuum. Other things equal, lower gas pressure means higher quality vacuum. For example, a typical vacuum cleaner produces enough suction to reduce air pressure by around 20%. Much higher quality vacuums are possible. Ultra-high vacuum chambers, common in chemistry, physics, and engineering, operate below one trillionth of atmospheric pressure, and can reach around 100 particles per cc. Outer space is an even higher quality vacuum, with the equivalent of just a few hydrogen atoms per cubic meter on average. According to modern understanding, even if all matter could be removed from a volume, it would still not be empty due to vacuum fluctuations. Dark energy, transient gamma rays, cosmic rays, neutrinos, and other phenomena in quantum physics. In the electromagnetism in the 19th century, vacuum was thought to be filled with a medium called ether. In modern particle physics, the vacuum state is considered the ground state of matter. Vacuum has been a frequent topic of philosophical debate since ancient Greek times, but was not studied empirically until the 17th century. Evangelista Torricelli produced the first laboratory vacuum in 1643, and other experimental techniques were developed as a result of his theories of atmospheric pressure. A Torricellian vacuum is created by filling with mercury a tall glass container closed at one end and then inverting the container into a bowl to contain the mercury. Vacuum became a valuable industrial tool in the 20th century with the introduction of incandescent light bulbs and vacuum tubes, and a wide array of vacuum technology has since become available. The recent development of human spaceflight has raised interest in the impact of vacuum on human health and on life forms in general. Etymology the word vacuum comes from Latin an empty space, void, noun use of neuter of vacuus, meaning, empty, related to vacuum, meaning, be empty. Vacuum is one of the few words in the English language that contains two consecutive letter U's. Historical interpretation. Historically, there has been much dispute over whether such a thing as a vacuum can exist. Ancient Greek philosophers debated the existence of a vacuum, or void, in the context of atomism, which posited void and atom as the fundamental explanatory elements of physics. Following Plato, even the abstract concept of a featureless void faced considerable skepticism. It could not be apprehended by the senses, it could not, itself, provide additional explanatory power beyond the physical volume with which it was commenced written. By definition, it was quite literally nothing at all, which cannot rightly be said to exist. Aristotle believed that no void could occur naturally because the denser surrounding material continuum would immediately fill any incipient rarity that might give rise to a void. In his physics book Chi V, Aristotle offered numerous arguments against the void. For example, that motion through a medium which offered no impediment could continue ad infinitum, there being no reason that something would come to rest anywhere in particular. Although Lucretius argued for the existence of vacuum in the 1st century BC and Hero of Alexandria tried unsuccessfully to create an artificial vacuum in the 1st century AD, it was European scholars such as Roger Bacon, Blasius of Parma and Walter Burley in the 13th and 14th century who focused considerable attention on these issues. Eventually following stoic physics in this instance, 
scholars from the 14th century onward increasingly departed from the Aristotelian perspective in favor of a supernatural void beyond the confines of the cosmos itself, a conclusion widely acknowledged by the 17th century, which helped to segregate natural and theological concerns. Almost 2,000 years after Plato, René Descartes also proposed a geometrically based alternative theory of atomism, without the problematic nothing-everything dichotomy avoid an atom. Although Descartes agreed with the contemporary position that a vacuum does not occur in nature, the success of his namesake coordinate system and more implicitly, the spatial corporeal component of his metaphysics would come to define the philosophically modern notion of empty space as a quantified extension of volume. By the ancient definition, however, directional information and magnitude were conceptually distinct. With the acquiescence of Cartesian mechanical philosophy to the brute fact of action at a distance and at length, its successful reification by force fields and ever more sophisticated geometric structure, the anachronism of empty space widened until a seething ferment of quantum activity in the 20th century filled the vacuum with a virtual pleroma. The explanation of a clepsydra or water clock was a popular topic in the Middle Ages. Although a simple wineskin sufficed to demonstrate a partial vacuum, in principle, more advanced suction pumps had been developed in Roman Pompeii. In the medieval Middle Eastern world, the physicist and Islamic scholar, Al-Farabi, conducted a small experiment concerning the existence of vacuum, in which he investigated handheld plungers in water. He concluded that air's volume can expand to fill available space, and he suggested that the concept of perfect vacuum was incoherent. However, according to Nader el Bizri, the physicists Ibn el Haytham and the Mutajali theologians disagreed with Aristotle and al Farabi, and they supported the existence of a void. Using geometry, Ibn al Haytham mathematically demonstrated that places the imagined three dimensional void between the inner surfaces of a containing body. According to Ahmad Dalil, Abu Rayhan al-Biruni also states that there is no observable evidence that rules out the possibility of vacuum. The suction pump later appeared in Europe from the 15th century. Medieval thought experiments into the idea of a vacuum considered whether a vacuum was present, if only for an instant, between two flat plates when they were rapidly separated. There was much discussion of whether the air moved in quickly enough as the plates were separated, or, as Walter Burley postulated, whether a celestial agent prevented the vacuum arising. The commonly held view that nature abhorred a vacuum was called horovaca. Speculation that Ivan God could not create a vacuum if he wanted to was shut down by the 1277 Paris condemnations of Bishop Etienne Tempier, which required there to be no restrictions on the powers of God, which led to the conclusion that God could create a vacuum if he so wished. Jean Buridan reported in the 14th century that teams of ten horses could not pull open bellows when the port was sealed. The 17th century saw the first attempts to quantify measurements of partial vacuum. Evangelista Torricelli's Mercury Barometer of 1643 and Blaise Pascal's experiments that both demonstrated a partial vacuum. In 1654, Otto von Guericke invented the first vacuum pump and conducted his famous Magdeburg Hemispheres experiment showing that teams of horses could not separate two hemispheres from which the air had been partially evacuated. Robert Boyle improved the Riquet's design and with the help of Robert Hooke further developed vacuum pump technology. Thereafter, research into the partial vacuum lapsed until 1850 when August Topeler invented the Topeler pump and Heinrich Geisler invented the mercury displacement pump in 1855, achieving a partial vacuum of about 10 pascals. A number of electrical properties become observable at this vacuum level which renewed interest in further research. While outer space provides the most rarefied example of a naturally occurring partial vacuum, 
The heavens were originally thought to be seamlessly filled by a rigid indestructible material called ether. Borrowing somewhat from the pneuma of Stoic physics, ether came to be regarded as the rarefied air from which it took its name. Early theories of light posited a ubiquitous terrestrial and celestial medium through which light propagated. Additionally, the concept informed Isaac Newton's explanations of both refraction and of radiant heat. 19th century experiments into this luminiferous ether attempted to detect a minute drag on the Earth's orbit. While the Earth does, in fact, move through a relatively dense medium in comparison to that of interstellar space, the drag is so minuscule that it could not be detected. In 1912, astronomer Henry Pickering commented, while the interstellar absorbing medium may be simply the ether, it is characteristic of a gas, and free gaseous molecules are certainly there. In 1930, Paul Dirac proposed a model of the vacuum as an infinite sea of particles possessing negative energy, called the Dirac Sea. This theory helped refine the predictions of his earlier formulated Dirac equation, and successfully predicted the existence of the positron. Confirmed two years later, Werner Heisenberg's uncertainty principle formulated in 1927 predict a fundamental limit within which instantaneous position and momentum, or energy and time can be measured. This has far-reaching consequences on the emptiness of space between particles. In the late 20th century, so-called virtual particles that arise spontaneously from empty space were confirmed classical field theories. The strictest criteria to define a vacuum is a region of space and time where all the components of the stress energy tensor are zero. It means that this region is empty of energy and momentum, and by consequence, it must be empty of particles and other physical fields that contain energy and momentum. Gravity and general relativity, a vanishing stress energy, tenso implies, through Einstein field equations, the vanishing of all the components of the Ricci tensor. Vacuum does not mean that the curvature of space-time is necessarily flat. The gravitational field can still produce curvature in a vacuum in the form of tidal forces and gravitational waves. The black hole is an elegant example of a region completely filled with vacuum, but still showing a strong curvature. Electromagnetism in classical electromagnetism, the vacuum of free space, or sometimes just free space or perfect vacuum, is a standard reference medium for electromagnetic effects. Some authors refer to this reference medium as classical vacuum, a terminology intended to separate this concept from QED vacuum or QCD vacuum, where vacuum fluctuations can produce transient virtual particle densities and a relative permittivity and relative permeability that are not identically unity. In the theory of classical electromagnetism, free space has the following properties. Electromagnetic radiation travels, when unobstructed, at the speed of light, the defined value 299,792,458 meters per second in SI units. The superposition principle is always exactly true. For example, the electric potential generated by two charges is the simple addition of the potentials generated by each charge in isolation. The value of the electric field at any point around these two charges is found by calculating the vector sum of the two electric fields from each of the charges acting alone. The permittivity and permeability are exactly the electric constant epsilon zero and magnetic constant mu zero, respectively, or exactly one. The characteristic impedance equals the impedance of free space Z0 376.73 ohms. The vacuum of classical electromagnetism can be viewed as an idealized electromagnetic medium with the constitutive relations in SI units, relating the electric displacement field D to the electric field E and the magnetic field or H field H to the magnetic induction or B field B. Here are R is a spatial location and T is time. Quantum mechanics. For more details on this topic, see QED vacuum, QCD vacuum, vacuum state.
In quantum mechanics and quantum field theory, the vacuum is defined as the state with the lowest possible energy. In quantum electrodynamics this vacuum is referred to as QED vacuum. To distinguish it from the vacuum of quantum chromodynamics, denoted as QCD vacuum, QED vacuum is a state with no matter particles, and also no photons. As described above, this state is impossible to achieve experimentally. Nonetheless, it provides a good model for realizable vacuum, and agrees with a number of experimental observations as described next. QED vacuum has interesting and complex properties. In QED vacuum, the electric and magnetic fields have zero average values, but their variances are not zero. As a result, QED vacuum contains vacuum fluctuations, and a finite energy called vacuum energy. Vacuum fluctuations are an essential and ubiquitous part of quantum field theory. Some experimentally verified effects of vacuum fluctuations include spontaneous emission and the Lamb shift. Coulomb's law and the electric potential in vacuum near an electric charge are modified. Theoretically, in QCD vacuum multiple vacuum states can coexist. The starting and ending of cosmological inflation is thought to have arisen from transitions between different vacuum states. For theories obtained by quantization of a classical theory, each stationary point of the energy in the configuration space gives rise to a single vacuum. String theory is believed to have a huge number of vacua, the so-called string theory landscape, outer space. Outer space has very low density and pressure, and is the closest physical approximation of a perfect vacuum. But no vacuum is truly perfect, not even in interstellar space, where there are still a few hydrogen atoms per cubic meter. Stars, planets and moons keep their atmospheres by gravitational attraction, and as such, atmospheres have no clearly delineated boundary. The density of atmospheric gas simply decreases with distance from the object. The Earth's atmospheric pressure drops to about 699832000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000